it's two minutes into the 6th of February and I want to start this video it's Operation Paris by saying I messed up last month there was a lot of stress physical stress and more importantly mental stress because I was thinking okay I need to be running this time if I don't run this time it's all over because if I don't run this time sub 7 it's going to ruin me when I get to outdoors when I want to run sub 11 and that's going to ruin me when I want to run sub 22 I want all this other stuff for the rest of the season and when I started to not PB anymore it started to mess with me which made PBing another thing that was affecting me that was negatively affecting me and my time just got slower and that all out of behalf which is annoying and two weeks ago I spoke to my coach and he said you've been working too much you just need to chill and I took those words as literally as I possibly could usually when he says that because he says that sometimes I'm like oh okay I just don't come in for the rest of the week but I'm still thinking about track you know one just waiting for the days to go by so I can come back but last week I didn't do that last week I was like okay you know what for this week what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna not just chill I'm gonna for completely forget that I'm actually a track athlete so a few a few things that I didn't do which was train obviously that was that was a bare minimum I didn't train I didn't go track I didn't go gym um, I didn't one thing is really hard to do but I didn't do it was I didn't try and practice my block starts going up the stairs didn't do that it's hard that was the hardest it was really hard but i did it and i just lived like a uni student for once i went to bed late i woke up late i think the most amount of sleep i got one of my days was like 12 hours and i did that i think it was back to back um i my eating habits were horrendous sometimes i'd eat what i normally eat sometimes i eat something else sometimes i wouldn't eat at all and the point of all of that wasn't because if you think of it just based off of macros and stuff it's like that was really bad because you need to you're recovering you need to be eating you need to be eating right so you can do about that was what i needed the most was to chill my body was pretty much in an all right state just physically slightly fatigued it wasn't too fatigued after a few days i was fine what was really in a bad state was my mental state because of all this other stuff that i've been thinking about and i didn't just have to worry about track as an athlete but i had to worry about uni and that's a combination straight from hell. So, so the fact that I only had to worry about one instead of both for a week was really, really peaceful for once. I could really just relax and chill, not have to worry. And that really helped me because my mental state got better. And not only did I actually recover mentally, but my outlook changed because I realized I was just so hard on just trying to brute force my way down one of these barriers that I had that I forgot that track isn't like other sports. You, you can't really brute force your way to victory. You need to relax your way to victory, literally. You need to do the work. And then once you've done the work, just roll that hill, that roll that, that rock down the, the hill. And I was pushing that rock down the hill, which was making it slower. But now I just relaxed and I just went. And that change really helped. Because I was no longer worrying about, oh, look, look at that, you ran 719 and 718 twice, and then you ran 723 and 722. Not only did you fail to PB, but you got slower. Because think of all the possible negative thoughts you could possibly throw at a track athlete. I thought about those every day, basically every minute that I'd be thinking about track. But the fact that for more than a week, basically like eight or nine days, I didn't have to think about that. It was... It was thrilling. I did go to the gym. That was half a lie. I didn't do my normal training routine, but I just had fun. Because that was, if I had to sum up the entire week, that's what I'd say. It was fun. I did stuff that I wanted to do, which is why my eating habits were bad. If I wanted to stay up late, I would. If I wanted to go to bed early, I would. If I didn't want to get out of bed, I wouldn't. If I wanted to go to the gym, I'd try not to go because I know it's not very good for my recovery. But if I really, really wanted to go, I'd go about. I wouldn't train that much. Most of the fact, I only went to the gym twice to do any work. And it was just clean and jerk build ups and even build all the way up. 
because I wasn't wearing the right shoes. I left my gym bag at home. So it was really just pure fun for the entire week. And that relaxation really helped me just to chill so I could be better for this week. Because this week, it's this, I think I said already, it's 6th of February. Um, it wasn't before, but now it is. And I have a new mindset, just relax. No hard stuff, just soft, stay chill. And this new mindset, I already said how it helped in general, but how it actually has, how I think it's going to help for this month is I'm no longer trying to force stuff. And because I'm not trying to force stuff, I'm more willing to remove. Usually, I want to add, but now I'm more willing to remove. Last 12 week training block where I was doing all of that other stuff, I could add and adding would be fine. It would be very stressful on my body physically and sort of mentally taxing, but I could add as much as I wanted to because it was a strength power training block. But now this 12 week block is different. It's a power speed training block, which means I can't be training every day. I was training five to six days, days a week, last 12 weeks, this 12 weeks, I can't do that. We're training at most four days a week. I've already halved the training load by about half and I might even decrease it by even more. We'll have to see. I probably will. Training Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday and Tuesday is just one thing to snatch. Five times five and I might even make it four or three times five. So I'm really just focusing on just decreasing my load as much as possible so that things is just easy for me in general because I want the majority of the taxation that my central nervous system faces to be from sprinting either on the track at training or in a competition the gym should not be hindering me it should be there to maintain my strength maintain my weight and if possible make me a bit faster and more powerful but not too much just it's not too important anymore if you had to give myself a word for the month it would be deep because i want to get my shin angles as deep as possible so that i can come out low out of the blocks because when people say, come out of the block slow, like coaches, they don't actually mean come out of the block slow. Because if you try to do that, you probably come out like that. This this part being your legs and this part being your upper body. What you actually want is your shin angles to come out low so your body just lowers down. And I figured out, slightly, tiny bit, how to come out of the blocks lower with my shin angles so I can really push. And I want to keep working on that this month. Because this month we have bucks. And that's the only competition I'm going to have. It's going to be my first national competition of the year. And it's going to be my first indoor national competition ever. So I'm really excited for that. And with this new mindset I have, I'm not going to be worrying about trying to PB, let alone trying to sub, sub seven. I'm just going to focus on running. Because that's all I really needed to do. When I did that, I ran really fast. I don't know why I'm changing that up now. Because the last time I tried to focus on hitting a specific time, and I really, really tried to hit a specific time was when I was trying to break 12. And I could have broke 12 relatively easily if I did a few things. I wasn't really training smart anyway. I, was, I wasn't I was even training hard, but I could probably still could have broke 12. I ran 12.5 and then 12.2, and I think I ran one more 100 meter race. Then after that, I got bogged down by the 400 because that was what I was competing for at the time in 2021. But I was so focused on breaking that barrier that I never broke it. Yeah, I never competed again, so maybe I could have, maybe I couldn't have. But I was just so focused on trying to break the barrier that I got distracted and I wasn't able to focus on what really mattered, which was speed. And that's what I want to do for this month and all the other months. I don't want to be tired by trying to push. The grind set mindset worked during the last 12 weeks. It will work this 12 weeks. What works is speed. And speed is not tired. Time and speed, they're antonyms. They don't work together. They work separately and they do different things. If I want to be fast, I have to be energized and not be tired. So a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be doing in training will be short. Back how it normally is. I usually cut my training load short and people, like, they throw shade at me for doing it. But I do it because once I've got something and I feel it a bit, I don't want to push too much. Because if I push too much, I'm gonna to start to get tired and tired, being tired isn't gonna make me faster. So I'm not gonna try and be tired. If I make any adaptations in my technique that are good, like my coach said to me, once you've done it, because he said that to me two weeks ago as well, 
he said a lot of good things to me two weeks ago, but he said once you've once you've made that tiny improvement, don't do it again, just leave. And I was I told him I might do one more just to see if I really have it, and then I'll leave. But regardless whether you do one more or you don't, once you feel it, be happy and go home. There's there's nothing else I'm gonna really do. So that's what I'm gonna be focusing on for February, which is just improving my technique. Once I feel a bit of technical improvement, I'm gonna go home. I don't care if I just started the workout, it could be my first rep. That would be a bit of an exaggeration, probably wouldn't be anyway, but it could be my first rep. I feel a bit of improvement, I'm going home. It's as simple as that. I don't want to reward myself because all I care about is speed. And tired is the enemy of speed, so let's just grind and be done. But grind smart. So for this month, I did a few different training sessions. I trained Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And Tuesday and Thursday was whatever my coach gave me. One of the training sessions was doing 200 repeats. Some of the other sessions I actually don't remember, but that's fine because what was really important in February wasn't the training sessions on Tuesday or Thursday, but what I did the day in between on Wednesday, because Wednesday I dedicated that to block starts. It's really just acceleration work, but recently it's been block starts. And the focus for the block starts that I had was figuring out what was wrong with my first few steps. Because after I ran the 723 and the 722, I realized that I changed my, I mean, I knew I did. I changed my block starts a bit. But I needed to figure out what the problem was. Why were my blocks set up early in January better than my blocks set up later in January? To figure out what the problem was first. And from there, I needed to make the block set up even better than it was early January because I knew there was something wrong with it early in January, I just didn't know what. And I figured out that the problem was the back leg was too far back and the front leg was too far forward. Even with the original setup that I had before, so even once I got that setup, I needed to rechange the block setup again. And once I figured all of that out, I was able to fix my push to get it back to how it was in November again, which was great. Mr. Bond, I think I can run fast. I think I can run Once it goes across 120 degrees, then it can drive up. But you're aligning this other thing, you're right, so it's straight forward. That's it? Yeah. So don't stop that extension. Fire that as quickly as No no Coach is telling me to do uh, big arm splits. I've noticed that the front foot when I come out of blocks, it comes out fine. But because he said like, I'm not driving this arm forwards, I'm getting in a single tip position. Uh, this one uh, is not coming uh, up. If it can come higher, uh, my back is getting straight. So I'm going to try But once I got to that point, I ran into a problem. I injured my right knee, my left knee, my left knee. I injured my left knee. My right knee's in pain right now. But I injured my left knee, and it, it was a, a meniscus injury. I believe it was a low. It's probably a low grade. I didn't get professionally checked, but I did this last year, so I know what I did. And I know what it's supposed to do to me and I know what to roughly expect. Because of that, I know that I've done something to my meniscus and this happened right before Bucks, which was a bit unfortunate, but I did a block start session the Tuesday on the same week I had Bucks to verify how my body was performing. And we were all good, green lights. There was just a minor problem, which was 
when I was upright, I found it really hard to have that hip extension. Along with that, when I was coming out of blocks, I found it really hard to extend properly because my body just wanted to climb up out because of the pain it was experiencing. But throughout the entirety of February, there was one thing that I was noticing, which was I, it, the block start itself was so easy to fix. It's, it's actually insane because I literally just took me, I want to say number of five minutes to sit down and look at the problem, figure it out, which was just pushing back the front pedal by one finger, one finger. It was two steps and one finger. That's my ideal block setup for the front one. And for the back pedal, it's the normal three steps, but I just shift it forwards one. That was literally it. Oh, and also the back pedal. I don't raise it up by one. I keep it down the lower setting. That was it. That was all I needed to do. If you look to, which you're going to see, the block setup before I figured it out and the block setup after I figured it out and how I was coming out of the blocks, everything just clicked just like that. It, my body just it understood the assignment. It knew the job it needed to do and it just did it. I was pushing out both legs. The release was quick. The steps were wide and long. Everything was just how it was supposed to be. And it wasn't hard to stay in the blocks. Not to say it was easy to stay in the blocks. It's never easy to stay in the blocks. But it wasn't to the point where I was feeling tension in my hips. Because that was something that I realised. was, yeah, obviously you want to feel tension in your hips when you're coming up. When you're in the blocks. But you don't want to feel too much. Because then it's going to be hard to properly separate when the time comes. Because most likely your hips are going to be lower than they're supposed to. But I felt the right amount of tension in my hips. It was easy to split and everything went wrong. I was able to take the steps very good. But this, the week right after I got all of this down, I got that knee injury, which is really upsetting because of how well my hip extension was. I finally got the block start down and I knew box was going to go well. If on Tuesday I did the block starts and things went well, which they went all right. They didn't go great. But like I said, they went all right. But I wasn't going to make a massive PB because I knew I was in PB shape. But I wasn't going to make a massive PB come bucks, which was sad. And I did, but... Ow. Not many of that. In lane four, the Liverpool John Balls, Charles and Tony. In five, representing Reading University, Sam Fox. In six, from Edge Hill, and Oliver. Benjamin Rogers of Liverpool. So Sean Ampofo, one of those who has improved recently to 689. That was at the London Indoor Games. At Lee Valley, great triple jumper as well. Bucks Outdoor, bronze medalist last year. Sutherland, Adedoten, Ampovu, Utomi, Kwok, Oliver, Clark and Rogers, heat 11 of 14 of the men's 60 metres with a DNS in lane four for good measure. No, Utomi. So Adedoten just being overtaken by Am a clear overtake by any sense, 6.99 showing track side. So interesting that pretty much all of the times are faster officially than they're showing track side. Second at the Welsh Indoor Championships in the triple jump. Lots of non-Welsh athletes competing there as guests, as you will hear from uh, my notes across this weekend. Just so we now see them to the Mpofo. And I did PB. I ran 7.16 and I ran that with my knee injured and I didn't put any effort into the race. I want to say after 45 metres. I was just going through the motions, but there wasn't much force being produced because I, I knew I would have lost the race. I didn't think it think with my brain because I was like, if I want to get through to the next round in out the heats and into the semis, I need to I win this race or come second. Because I was like, relying on a small qualification is just too risky. But I did because of that I actually didn't miss out on small qualification because I just I was basically jogging down for the rest of the fifty meters and someone came past and just flew by me around seven eleven. 
and they got through, which meant if I actually tried, I probably would have got through to the semi-finals as well because I, I highly doubt he would have beat me if I just kept going. But you live, you learn. Indoors is done. It's not that big of a deal. So I'm not going to get bogged down on that because even if I did get to the semis, I would have got knocked out. I would definitely wouldn't have got to the finals. Because maybe I would have got there with my if my knee was in a better shape. Maybe, probably not though. So there's no need to get... There's no need to worry about that. Just run it how it was and be happy that you even got to go. After that, I cut them up short because my knee was injured and I just competed. So there's no need to overexert myself anymore. So I just took things easy and we rolled through into March.